On Tuesday, SpaceX once again flew a Starship prototype, the second stage of their next generation fully reusable rocket system. Starship SN9 lifted off into the clear skies of Boca Chica rocket facility for the second high altitude flight test of a Starship prototype. Just like its predecessor, SN8, Starship SN9 had a stable ascent with its three Raptor engines. During its ascent to the targeted altitude of 10 km, Starship SN9 was expected to first shut down one of the three Raptor engines and then, once near the apogee, shift to a single engine to maintain the altitude and perform the belly flop maneuver followed by a controlled descent. So, as expected, SN9 shifted to two Raptor engines at around T plus 1 minute 45 seconds and continued towards the targeted altitude. And then, later during the flight, at around T plus 3 minutes 15 seconds, SN9 shifted to the single Raptor engine as it prepared for the flip maneuver. The prototype reached the apogee of 10 km at around T plus 4 minutes. At this point of flight, SN9 had almost zero velocity and the single Raptor engine had also throttled down so that the thrust to weight ratio of the rocket was as close to 1 as possible. This means that the engine provided just enough thrust to counter the Earth's gravity. In other words, the rocket was holding the apogee to transition to the next phase of the flight. So, at T plus 4 minutes 35 seconds, Starship SN9 successfully performed the belly flop maneuver and shifted the control to its aerodynamic surfaces. Almost for the next two minutes, SN9 glided under the control of the aero surfaces towards the landing pad. Till this portion of the flight, everything was going according to plan. And then, there was the crucial landing burn. This is where things went wrong. For the landing burn, SN9 attempted to relight two of the three Raptor engines in order to reorient itself vertical for landing. However, during this flight, one of the engines just didn't ignite. The single ignited engine couldn't provide enough torque to stabilize the rapidly swinging 50 meters tall rocket. Thus, Starship SN9 hit the landing pad belly first and the test flight ended in a rapid unscheduled disassembly. The test flight of SN9 was quite similar to SN8 in many aspects. Both the prototypes had a stable ascent, successfully completed the belly flop, glided back to the landing pad and ended in a ball of fire. However, there is a crucial difference here. When comparing the test flights, Starship SN8 had actually successfully relighted two of the engines and was also better oriented for landing. However, we should not say that SN9 was less successful compared to SN8 because as we can see, the landing phase is where SpaceX is facing the challenges. So here is the question in front of us. What went wrong in the SN9 test flight? The reasons why the predecessor of SN9 failed was due to the low methane header tank. The starships are these two spherical fuel tanks, one for the liquid oxygen, another for the liquid methane. The methane header tank is situated in the middle of the two main fuel tanks, while the oxygen header tank is at the top of the nose cone. The fuel from these tanks is exclusively used for the landing burn. So, during the SN8 test flight, the pressure in the methane header tank dropped, which resulted in less fuel being pumped inside the combustion chamber. And ultimately, the engines couldn't provide enough thrust, which resulted in a crash landing. SpaceX actually found some temporary solution for this problem. Starship SN9 was equipped with pressurized helium containers. These were going to pressurize the header tank so that enough fuel and oxidizer was being pumped inside the Raptor's combustion chamber. When we look closely at the landing burn of SN9, we can see that one of the two engines ignited perfectly and created beautiful marked diamonds, which means that low tank pressure was probably not the reason behind the failure. The failing engine struggled to ignite for the landing burn. Looking closely at the failed engine, it appears that there was just not enough chamber pressure for the engine to relight. There can be many reasons behind the ignition failure. However, there are these two possibilities which seems more likely. First, it is possible that there were some problems with the fuel lines which led to the specific Raptor engine. Or second, this can also be an engine failure. The engine failure is also a possibility because Raptors are not fully matured yet. They are still in the development phase and SpaceX is still perfecting the technology. And when looking at the failing engine, we can confirm that there was a fire at the top of the skirt section. Apart from this, there were some debris falling off from SN9 during the landing burn. However, they don't seem to be coming off from the engines and most probably there were some heat shielding material from the inside of the skirt section. One more thing to note here is that we haven't got any official word from SpaceX or Elon Musk. So, these are just possible reasons for the failure. However, you might be wondering that what would have happened if these two engines performed perfectly. 
To answer this, we have to look at the landing maneuver. The landing burn for Starship looks something like this. First, two of the three engines ignite to flip the Starship vertical. This is followed by the shutdown of one of the two engines. Once vertical, Starship will use only one Raptor engine to slow down for landing. However, unfortunately, we haven't seen that whole maneuver play out successfully yet. So what's next for the Starship program? These landing failures are totally anticipated and I'm sure that this is not going to be the last. A big advantage that SpaceX have is that they are churning out these Starship prototypes at a very rapid pace. As you can see, we already have Starship SN10 on the launch pad. SpaceX can completely afford these failures. Starship SN10 will soon undergo the series of ground tests like the cryogenic pressure test, a static fire test and then a high altitude flight test. And the data that SpaceX gather in the SN9 flight will help to improve the chances of success for Starship SN10. And once SpaceX figure out the landing problem, they can start targeting even higher altitudes before eventually going for orbit. Another important aspect of this two-stage fully reusable rocket system is its first stage, the Super Heavy Booster. SpaceX is currently stacking the first prototype of the Super Heavy Booster, named BN1, with the parts for BN2 in production. SpaceX is targeting to reach orbit with Starship by the end of this year. So, one thing we can surely say is that we are going to see a lot more of these high altitude flights and maybe some more rapid unscheduled disassemblies. SpaceX will eventually solve the problem with the landing phase of Starship and move ahead to the more complex flight tests. Next up, we have Starship SN10, which probably will have the same flight profile like SN9, hopefully without the crash landing. Fingers crossed for that. That's all for today's video. If you like the content, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.